Hello, Luke here. I would just like to take a moment to disclose up front that we sometimes talk about sensitive topics in our podcasts, and in fairness to our audience, we will try our best to put specific warnings in the descriptions of each episode. Now on with the show. Yeah, we took off our corsets, then we stole the intercept. Aztec gold we shouldn't have kept, but that's parlay, right? Yeah, we swashbuckled too hard, stabbed Barbosa with a sward. Saved the day afterward, but that's parlay, right? That's parlay, right? Liz ditched the Commodore. J- er, let me try that again. <laughs> Liz ditched the Commodore, Jack returned to former glory, but Will's fate's a different story, that's parlay, right? It's a Friday Night by Katy Perry. Yeah, I got it, I got it, man. <laughs> nice, very nice. Yeah. And welcome to the Nostalgia Killers podcast, where we revisit films from our youth to see if they still hold up or should be inserted into the great DVD player in the sky. I am Luke Loaned, with me as always, almost as Chuck said this guy hi <laughs> Chuck Starzinski also almost as always Javier Martinez glad to be back and our special birthday guest Lauren Heaney Woo! Woo! thank you so much for having me and letting me do this movie I really appreciate it no problem and mm-hmm. we watched Pirates of the Caribbean yeah well, welcome to the Caribbean, love. Like, no, Jack, don't do that. And like, oh, Johnny Depp. Uh, and... Don't do that, accent. Yeah. <laughs> There's pirates and stuff happening. Oh, no, you're a zombie? Oh, yeah. You best believe in ghost stories, love, because you're in one. <laughs> this summer. Pirates of the Caribbean. Curse of the Black Pearl. Produced by Jerry Bruckheimer. Oh, of course. Most importantly, (laughs) produced by Jerry Bruckheimer. And Disney. That's right. Disney money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Money, money. Yeah, that's good. So, Lauren, what's your uh, nostalgic attachment to this film? Oh, man. I think I was homesick. Like, maybe nine years old. Yeah, there. Somewhere around there, um, and I don't know why the DVD was in the house necessarily, um, but I watched it by myself, and I finished it, and immediately started it again, (laughs) because I was like, this might be the best thing I have ever seen in my tiny, like, between nine and 12 year old life. That's awesome. Uh, Yeah. It's just a good time. So that's that's the first time I watched it, and I've watched it uh, countless times since then. So fave for sure. Mm-hmm. Right on, Javier. Um, so I don't know why, but I have this really vivid memory in my childhood of driving somewhere and seeing a big old billboard, like the biggest billboard I've ever seen in my life, with you know the for the pirates advertising, and it's just black with the medallion. Mm-hmm. Right, and uh-huh. it just says Intriguing. pirate. Yeah, you know, coming whatever two thousand five or whatever two thousand uh, three. Sorry, um, and then oh, dad, dad, we have to go watch it. We have to go watch. It. I want to see this pirates. Movie. I have no idea what it's about, and he's just like, yeah, pirates, let's go watch it. Um, then just having a blast, and mm. uh, yeah, I think it's it's the, the first like pirate movie that I ever saw, or, or, or like I really try to rack my brain and remember like. Where else did I see like where, where where did I get the idea of pirates from if it mm-hmm. wasn't from pirates because I had it before, but I can't recall what well, TV show or I, movie or. I hope, I hope it wasn't Cutthroat Island. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that reflects a lot of people's experience. Um, there being their this being their first introduction to like the pirate lore and mythology and all that yeah. stuff. How about you, Chuck? Yeah, um, I was thirteen visiting my dad over summer break, and uh, yeah, movies were always something that we bonded over. So we went and saw this opening weekend in theaters at AMC 1000 in San Francisco. Mm. And I remember absolutely loving it. Uh, more specifically, uh, I remember being madly in love with Kira Knightley. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, also, I had no idea that it was based on a ride at Disneyland. 
Oh, yeah. And yeah. so I'm sure that that probably would have cheapened my experience a little bit because I was 13 and I was cool. And like I was like, what? They made a that sounds like a kid's movie now. I don't want to see a kid's movie. Right. I want to see this cool PG-13 pirate movie. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm 13 now. I get to get in. I don't even have to lie. <laughs> Not like with the cigarettes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right on. Um, my family, my mother at least, was a big fan of the Disney ride. And I went on that several times as a child. And watching the movie, I didn't even know it was based on the ride. But I saw mm -hmm. that there are a couple scenes yeah. that are cinematically exactly mm -hmm. what you see on the ride. And that was great. Um, but I also was actually a pirate of the Caribbean. For, That's right. For uh, uh, two and a half years uh, in the Coast Guard. So sailing around the Caribbean, when you come across a, a ship that doesn't have people on it, you're allowed to just steal whatever the fuck you want off of it. Oh. Did what? you do that? <laughs> so so here's, here's the excuse. It's a hazard to navigation because at nighttime you're supposed to have lights on. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, the ship could just run into you. Sure. So part of my job was to go on there and steal all the electronics, all the intelligence I could from the boat, come back to my boat. Everyone else would be taking off the motors, the uh, anything, fridges, whatever we could use, sell. Hmm. Uh, not sell. There's there's an auxiliary, a Coast Guard auxiliary that is like a Boy Scouts kind of deal that like they use all the stuff we mm -hmm. take in. Um, but then we, you know, leave a couple barrels of like gasoline. Are you... And then I'm sail away me? and shoot flares at it Whoa. <laughs> to, to blow it up and sink it as, as target practice. Oh my god! Yeah, that's wild. Yeah, that's insane. Oh my god. You literally were a pirate. I was, I, was, I was an actual pirate of the Caribbean. He's a pirate. Yeah. You were a scallywag. That was the first time I was a pirate. The second time, unrelated, I was uh, working for a yacht company in Seattle, and we did repositions. Oh, I thought you were going to say like uh, a yacht. Uh, literally it. repo. You wow. wouldn't oh steal god. a DVD. <laughs> <laughs> but I would steal a yacht. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, as being a pirate myself, I'm uh, qualified. Well, not not just qualified. I I have a, a soft spot for pirate mm -hmm. movies. Oh. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Did you get cool dreads and a peg leg too? Uh, no, oh, no. I still wear uniform. But, uh, <laughs> we did have pirate days. There were like actual like <laughs> oh, yeah? costume days where you can just like, tear up your uniform and make pirate outfits. And oh, cool. we weren't supposed to because we're a U.S. government ship, yeah. but we would we would fly the Jolly Roger. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It was yeah. It's highly illegal. You know, <laughs> it's, illegal, it's illegal for civilians to do that. It's even worse for a military boat to do that. Do you guys have any parrots that just hung out? <laughs> no, we, we had a we had a executive officer who was very into it, and he had a fake one. He would he bring, yeah. he brought it with him for the entire four month patrol. Oh my god, to like that's have incredible. all those two or three days where we had pirate days. It was great. That's awesome. No no pictures allowed, of course. Mm. Um, right, right. But yeah, it was good times. So are you going to post the pictures when this episode is live? <laughs> <laughs> if I had some, I would. Oh. Yeah. No pictures. Yeah. Mm. There's, right. Yeah. I'll, I'll go into it later, but there's, there's some funny things about that. But, <laughs> um, right on. Uh, most nostalgic favorite scenes. Um, I'm going to kick it off with the sacking of Port Royal. Mm. Okay. This whole yeah, sequence, um, really, like up to this, it's all been set up, backstory, baby Elizabeth, wake up, like, ooh, he's haunted, no, 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 grown up will. And then um, it really actually starts the movie off. Mm -hmm. Once the Black Pearl rolls in, they start firing on Port Royal, the pirates roll in, and it's just... A whole heap of fun, honestly. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you have certain characters separated from each other, trapped in different areas, and how they're all reacting differently to the like inciting incident emergency. And yeah, good time, swashbuckling, getting it going. Yeah, like that one. Nice. nice. <laughs> okay. um, yeah, mine definitely has to be... Uh the escape of jack sparrow or the almost escape of jack sparrow oh yeah yeah um yeah i just think you know because you'd be kind of uh, we get a little hint of you know who he is and then we kind of but then we also have this uh kind of dark side to him when he's telling elizabeth that you know oh, you know put on his belt and yeah. this stuff you're kind of like oh i don't know you know what's going on here mm -hmm. and then it goes right into his escape and it's like super fun and 
the whole just quirkiness of it and kind of uh, uh, seeing just his never-ending luck um, yeah mm-hmm. which is great it's just it's just such a blast to watch yeah um, really yeah. well choreographed action I would say too is what I was noticing yeah because even as he's like the one that came to mind specifically is he's handcuffed and he throw he brings his hands together, throws yeah. it over, catches it. To so zip. you understand how to he's zip lining. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just fucking ridiculous. <laughs> but I was like, ah, oh, this makes sense. And that's right. why it works so fucking well, is you can kind of like your suspension of disbelief is able to go along with this mm-hmm. while sure. it's all going down. Yeah. I think it's pretty obvious from the get go that it's all for fun too. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's like it's it's serious to a point, but it's all, you know, you should yeah. you should be expecting that kind of stuff. I think the only like real blood is right at the end of the movie. Other yep. than that, there's no. Yeah. Yeah. There's it's like the, very, the drops like... of blood on the Aztec gold, and that's about it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was the the sword after? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But yeah. How about you, Chuck? Yeah, um, no one touched on it yet, so I've got Jack and Will's blacksmith uh, barn sword fight. That's my favorite, too. It's like exposition done right. It's not like, uh, you know, throw George Lucas under the bus, but it's like, (laughs) it'll be like, you know, it's like, oh, you know, Han walks out, and then it just says on the script, if you look at it, they fight. Yeah. (laughs) Whereas this is literally like, they are doing an exposition dump in the best way possible. We're like fucking quitching, quitching, like clinking metal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's verbal sparring. We get to... learn who will is as a person like you know how he's just basically the white knight character of the film and all that we get a bit of backstory on uh jack sparrow and we learn you know a little bit not that we weren't with him already but we get a little bit more of his humility and see that he really is just like deep down a sweetheart and stuff like that like you get lines like oh you know this bullet isn't meant for you boy like Mm -hmm. i'm not i don't want to kill you but like i will if i have to to get through this you know because like i'm not going to be hanged for you know commandeering a boat and all this kind of fun stuff and yeah it's mm-hmm. just a great scene yeah yeah that was that was pretty much it for me too the other thing visually striking that i remember is when the um the interceptor and the, i guess it's the the dauntless was the other dauntless? Yeah. Yeah. yeah when they do the the anchor maneuver and they they turn to, and they get the guns ready mm-hmm. and then the shot of seeing across seeing the guns across the the ship that are like yeah. staring you down like i'm gonna get you fucker yeah i was gonna say that's my number two is the cannon so battle cool. yeah yeah pretty good it was a pretty good representation of like what that what those battles were like too mm-hmm. I, I was surprised to see it in this movie anyone got any like super heavy other favorites they want to add on i do want to shout out um it's such a short scene but it's the first time that jack and barbosa reconnect and it's in the cave after mm. um will has hit him over the head and he is completely dazed wandering around and up to this point, he's assumed dead by the entire crew. And it's, I don't know, at the first time that I saw it was comedy gold. Yeah. <laughs> um, and you know what? I still laughed the last time I saw it. And he is dazed. He's doing that. This is a podcast, so I shouldn't. Well, we got a video. Ju- oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There you, you, can, you can still describe it. Like, <laughs> like kind of thing and just like trying to say parlay. And it's pretty fucking dumb. But I think it's like a very comical quintessential example of some of the major characters. And you have the two buddy pirates together mm. there trying to question him. And he's, yeah. So that's one. And then I also would like to say that I really enjoy the marooning scene where they're stuck on the island together. Oh, yeah, it's so good. Because, yeah, you see Elizabeth finally come up to her like she's had absolutely enough of the bullshit. And at the same time, the night that she's supposedly getting drunk, he's getting actually drunk. That's kind of like the quintessential like coming together of you like finally understand his character and the motivation and it's like beautifully shot just like the fire and it's moving around them. Um, so that's one, another favorite scene for sure. That's that's an island off of um, Barbados mm. and, mm. and Tobago. I think I looked it up. I think it's out there. Yeah. Nice. It's uh, yeah. Lots of those out there. Nice. Got some islands out there. Yeah. <laughs> Couple of them. Just one or two. <laughs> <laughs> Um, nitpicks and fixes. Too fucking long. What? Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> I don't know about that. Um, Personally. Yeah. I mean, do you want to go off on that real quick? 
I think I was <laughs> shocked watching it because I never remembered it being that long. Same, yeah, I didn't remember the the, the runtime on this. Hmm. Um, and as I was watching it, it's not necessarily scenes that I would cut, but just like tightening up of little visual gags things mm. that were lingering on like i think you could easily cut like 10 to 15 minutes out of this movie and yeah, still w- have the same energy and film intact sure way too many establishing shots like there's <laughs> so many like yep i've seen the black pearl already that is sure is the black pearl <laughs> oh, but they're so gorgeous it's they really are. pretty it's so good everything looks so good if you pay that much to get a real ship yeah exactly up. i was gonna yeah. say yeah. that's yeah. what it yeah. is yeah. <laughs> oh yeah and you're gonna definitely put that in the movie yeah my biggest nitpick is uh, the Commandore being so cool with his fiance just running off with a blacksmith and letting uh, <laughs> a known like killer pirate just go. Someone who's on death row is just like, nah, like we'll give him a day's head start. Yeah. I, I do like the setup for the following movies, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah I, do like, I do like Norrington yeah. as a character. He, he comes back strong in the second one. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's a little inexplicable explicable but like how else are you gonna wrap up this movie <laughs> yeah yeah and it is um it shows a little backbone i think mm-hmm. to be like realize when you've lost or when no, oh to, yeah to not continue to sure. yeah. pursue the comically underage woman <laughs> who's you know That's trying to marry other. her yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> like maybe realize it's wrong but you can mm-hmm. still you know there's nothing wrong with being in love just don't act on it maybe mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. Yeah, seventeen year old Kira Knightley. Well not just that, like at the beginning of the film, he's a he's <laughs> yeah. an actual like <laughs> an adult captain himself yeah. and she's twelve or whatever. Yeah. Like yeah. Jesus. Yeah, he's yeah. like, you know, even in like you know, being kind to like us you know, it's oldie times, it's like he's at least like nineteen, like at the youngest that he can possibly sure. be, like, you know I and she's I twelve. I think yeah. she ha- he has to be older than that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's probably in his thirties. No, he's yeah. in his thirties. I'm being, yeah, I'm saying like, Commodore if you're gonna do the whole thing of like, well, yeah. you know, he's playing young. Like, no, no. no. <laughs> like, uh, Luke, you can speak on this actually, but like to achieve that rank, like back then it was different. Like, if we look at other movies, there are midshipmen who are 12, 13 years old, and they they start when they're you know children. basically children. Yeah. Um, but yeah. to get to get that rank, no, you'd have to be in your late 20s 30s easily mm. not that they paid that much attention to it. it's just weird watching it again this time knowing their mm. age difference we're like mm-hmm. wait a minute <laughs> he's gonna try to marry her and force mm-hmm. it and but he doesn't he walks away i yeah. it it's burns also him, but... yeah at that time it would have been a strong smart match for her sure and she is of marryable age <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. And I mean, I think you're, I mean, you're, you're supposed to, you're supposed to get that ick too, you know? So you're, yeah. so you're not like, yeah. oh, well, you're not she does have a hard <laughs> choice between a uh, Commodore and uh well, it's like, no, like this is clearly the obvious yeah, choice. Yeah, this is so. no yeah. team yeah. Edward, team Jacob at right, all. Right, this right. is like, <laughs> no. It was like, no, that guy's old and weird. And that guy's like age appropriate. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> um, speaking of that, um, my only nitpick and it's, I mean, I tried to think of like, if it would still work without it. And I was like, eh, maybe not. So. But it's the only thing I can think of. But just like the romance stuff, I remember as a kid, I was like, eh, I don't want to see this. <laughs> and then, but even watching it now, I'm kind of like, eh, I kind of don't. I mean, I don't want to compare it to like the romance and like the Star Wars prequels, but it kind of feels like that. Like I'm just like, can we just get back to the swashbuckling and the, uh, you know, Johnny Depp doing his thing? Like I don't want to hear Elizabeth and Will proclaim their love for each other again. Like chemistry is kind of weak. I think you yeah. could have the same um not romantic but um like strong connection like with almost a brother like if she had a mm. brother and you, like elizabeth got taken i'm gonna spring this pirate that mm. and that and lose the mm-hmm. romance yeah but i understand why it's there and honestly at the time i thought oh my god <laughs> <laughs> i think yeah when the movie ended this rewatch that we did i was like the, when she like takes off his hat and the sweeping music comes in i was like ah! <laughs> <laughs> you're a pirate <laughs> my other last final biggest nitpick and i don't know if it's this an, even necessarily a nitpick but it's just like Wow, that aged poorly is the CGI. Oh, yeah. 
Oh yeah, yeah, you're right. Uh, I was thinking, I was trying to remember what CGI, but yeah, the the skeletons, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. is what you mean the the moonlight skeletons. Mm-hmm. Yeah. See, it's funny. I don't think it's that bad. And no. I remember Chuck knocked it knocked it a couple episodes back on the mummy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I don't think it's that bad. No. Honestly, the worst CGI was like I saw like um, uh, when she first falls into the water, and there's like that ripple effect, the the water ripple. That's the only thing I was like, oh, that looks like video game water. <laughs> <laughs> but other than that. I, I, noticed, it didn't bother me. I, I noticed this time uh, the island there marooned on the burning of the island was fake. Oh. Uh, it was mm-hmm. very, very dra- like boring CGI. It's like, oh, that kind of mm-hmm. aged poorly. Mine is when she's having dinner with Barbosa and she stabs him and then goes out and she sees the f- skeletal ghost pirates mm-hmm. for the first time. Not necessarily everybody, but there's a transition shot where... Barbosa steps from shadow into the moonlight and you see his face transform mm-hmm. and it is just the most uncanny valley moment that oh, I yeah. ever experienced in my young life. Yeah. <laughs> um and it's always really, really bothered me when I've watched it. <laughs> I love um, that shot. <laughs> uh, no. I, I, I I'm with Javi. I kinda of forgave it. I, I realized it wasn't the greatest, but it's a cool reveal, I think. Maybe that's what kind of just but in the back of my mind, it's always it's a Disney movie. Yeah, that's yeah. true. And I'm thinking if they went real grotesque. Yeah, that's true. They probably wouldn't want to. They um, barely put blood in the movie. Yeah, and also there are shots that I think work a lot better, like when the pirate skeletal crew is like walking underwater to go attack the ship. It yeah. looks super beautiful and kind of ethereal. Right. So it's not all bad True. But it's, yeah it's really like when they're super highlighted in the moonlight is when mm-hmm. it just looks like oh that looks a little raw the moonlight shows us for what we truly are bad cgi <laughs> bad cgi, bad CGI. <laughs> um do you have any nitpicks Luke? Mine, mine are actually practical um in the beginning at the at the reveal of uh jack sparrow when he's um riding the little little boat mm. <laughs> um sails need wind to move <laughs> oh, he's sitting there bailing out a boat and he's supposed to be moving but the sail is just flat and yeah. it's not going anywhere it happens on the ships as well mm. when they're filming on the on the actual tall ships there's no the the sails are shown full but the water's still <laughs> like they're not moving it's mm. the power of the zombie curse luke come on in mm. the daytime no <laughs> it's a disney movie okay <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's magic a, it's a filming nightmare too yeah. i wouldn't expect him to be able to fix that did, yeah yeah did you guys ever watch like we bought the dvd that has two discs and they have mm-hmm. an entire second dvd of special features which includes several featurettes about the making of the movie. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god. I watched a bunch on YouTube. I love it. It's like yeah. crack for me, but like all of the stuff about trying to actually shoot on the fucking ocean with two giant boats and just mm-hmm. the logistical nightmare. Everyone should have learned their lesson from Jaws. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> they should have been like, fuck water. Yeah. yeah. Do it in a do it in a studio. Yeah. But it just ah oh, but it looks so good. It does. It does. <laughs> and they, 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 were, had to, yeah. they did it for half. For half of the shots, they actually did shoot them out at sea, and then they realized it was just going to be easier mm. to film in a, in a soundstage, you know, and like, um, and they actually did some of it at thirty two ten. Oh, did um, they? Yeah, it was, it's yeah. on the it's on the wall in there. One on one of their posters, um. they have the the black pearl. That's where they did the, a lot of the water stuff. No well, way. Cool. Yeah. What, what That's is thirty two ten for? It's a soundstage where they uh, did like originally Star Wars down in San Rafael. Oh, mm-hmm. and we we actually had a film show there. In the George Lucas Theater, it's right yeah. next to it. Yeah. Wow, We're you so guys cool. are famous. <laughs> You're such a good movie maker. It's all you guys. I think we have pictures of that too. We could probably. Oh, we totally them, do. Yeah. Throw them up there. <laughs> could throw them up there. That was a good time. Um, I got one last nitpick, um, and it's more or less like a, you know, should have been a nitpick back then, but definitely a nitpick nowadays. Um, wow, they sure do hit Elizabeth a lot. <laughs> a lot of grown men smacking this like. You know, to be forgiving of the movie, maybe eighteen-year-old girl around a lot. Yeah, <laughs> didn't bother me. <laughs> was, I I noticed it, but I also like count how many other times everyone else gets hit, and yeah, beat. it's it's very slapsticky. It's very slapsticky. But if if she was admitted, I would have that might have been a fault too. I'm trying to think. So like she, she, she gets backhanded by the mm. really tall, cool 
pirate. Mm-hmm. Speak when spoken to. The boss, yeah. 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 Um, who else hits her? Barbosa hits her too. Um, and then I feel like someone else does. But I would be honored to be slapped by Jeffrey Rush. <laughs> uh, that but, would fucking dissolve me into like a puddle of pure ecstasy. The only reason it's a nitpick is because most of the other violence, like unless it's like cool swashbuckling violence, most of the other like hits are played for laughs and like just kind of like it is like a slapsticky thing. Saying, yeah. This I, is like a, yeah. Like speak when spoken to, you know, kind of thing. I think it plays to the, you know, society at the time. It's also, she is deeply threatened throughout this movie, but she's never threatened with fucking rape Mm -hmm. or like death necessarily. Well, kind Mm. of mainly. And I think this is more of like a gent for lack of a better term a gentler way to be like she is in physical danger mm-hmm. but no it's not that bad don't worry mm-hmm. that much guys she might get hit a little bit but don't worry it's the house of mouse she's okay <laughs> they didn't even leave a bruise she's fine yeah <laughs> um i've got one more um flintlock pistols don't work after being wet of all the guns, they they have nothing but flintlock mm. guns, mm-hmm. and they, these are the guns you have to pour powder into, and then they yeah. go diving in the water and they come out and then they threaten somebody with it. It's like not gonna go bang bang. No, which is funny because that that might be one of those like um, what's the term? Not inconsistency, but like a uh, idiosyncrasy. No, no, I was thinking like continuity, but anyways, because I think I don't know if it's in this movie, um, but they do do that at some point. Like at some point they like. Maybe it's in the second one or something. They like aim their guns and like, oh, it's not working because it's wet. Yeah. So that's mm-hmm. why it's like, oh, now it doesn't. Yeah, work. They, yeah. 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 But in this one, it's like, you're right. Yeah, you yeah. know, Jack comes out of the water and points his pistol mm. at Barbosa. Mm-hmm. It's like, it's not a threat. Yeah. Why would you? And like, yeah, I won't, I won't go into it. But yeah, <laughs> magic. I'm w- watching it, and I'm like, <laughs> more magic, baby. It don't work like that. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's it. That's all I got. Nice. Um, rainy day pairing. <laughs> Mm. Lauren? Um, so for theme, definitely National Treasure because it's a fun <laughs> action adventure movie. <laughs> Jerry Brockheimer, my fucking guy, that tree, lightning coming down. I know I'm a good gonna You're have a good, a good time. Yeah, I'm gonna have a great time. <laughs> um but nautical um Disney pairing is a throwback, the Swiss Family Robinson. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. Which I fucking love this cool. movie. I've seen it so many times with my sister. Uh, that's a really solid movie. And filmed on Trinidad and Tobago, which yeah. is when you said that. That finally, uh, like, I triggered finally. <laughs> I was nice. like, this still, is the perfect pairing. Still a bucket list item of mine is to create a, a treehouse city. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. That oh, treehouse. Yeah. <laughs> my 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 heaven probably yeah. looks like that <laughs> honestly yeah. uh, how about and, you oh. yeah. no go go <laughs> um, I got the mask of Zorro mm, okay yeah. which yeah. hopefully yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll do on here uh, yeah so for sure oh yeah we'll do it soon I would deeply but just swashbuckling and you know um Cleavage, young lady cleavage uh, you know yeah oh, got yeah. a lot of the same kind of beats you know Antonio Banderas <laughs> cool you know he's got the yeah, yeah. So it's got to be Mask of Zorro. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Check. Uh, I got the Princess Bride. All right. Because mm-hmm. you've got swashbuckling, you've got unrequited love, damsel in distress. It's yeah. still like very fun and like, you know, because it is a retelling of a story, we know not to take it too seriously. Yeah, that's just a good time. I've got a movie that was filmed at the same time as this, and which goes into explain a lot of the alternative casting that Chuck's going to go into, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. But uh, Master and Commander. <laughs> That was oh yeah. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, if you if you're looking for realism, mm-hmm. as close to it can get in a movie, pretty damn good. Nice. Yeah. This is a light tangent, but Taylor, beautiful Taylor Defender for a friend of the pod, has been sending me pictures of it's Russell Crowe. Russell Crowe. Uh, in costume on a ship smoking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like behind the scenes or like in yeah, the movie? Yeah, no. She's like, uh, <laughs> have you seen this movie? And also this, like, bitch, check it out. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Taylor. I love you. <laughs> yes, thank you, Taylor. Right on. Um, this movie's Cocktail. Yeah. Mm. 
For today's cocktail, we have a Parlay Punch. <laughs> That's an ounce and a half of dark rum, half ounce of Amaro. Uh, to be on theme, I used Titanic brand Amaro, which I did not know was a thing until I discovered it at a grocery outlet for $4. <laughs> what a steal. It was a steal. Uh, well, you know. Thanks, the, Patreon. Yeah. There's the whole, uh, you know, submarine debacle happening, so yeah, I'm sure it was so like a, no, 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 we can't sell Titanic rum like <laughs> booze anymore. Are we drinking dead people? Exactly. <laughs> uh, so yeah, half ounce of Amaro, uh, half ounce of lime, quarter ounce of Orgite, which I actually made from scratch. Oh. I know. <laughs> quarter ounce of uh, coconut cream and a half ounce of pineapple juice. It is fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. It might be, might be your best one. Give it a yeah, stir, for sure. Yeah. Once we have an audio break, I'll make a storm in my own glass there. I was going to say, give the people what they want. Give them the maelstrom. <laughs> it's the ASMR section of our Let podcast. Sweet. <laughs> Very nice. And with that, on to our first ad break. Woo! Mm-hmm. And we're back with Act Two, the Evidence Board. Um, who wants to? Uh... Yeah, I mean, I'll do the nitty gritty, and then I'll do just the... hand the reins. Right on. Uh, released in two thousand and three, it cost one hundred and forty million dollars to make, but worldwide brought in six hundred and fifty-four million dollars. Wow, what a hit! Yeah, no, that's. Um, I think those are old numbers too. I think it's gone bigger. Oh, I'm sure it has. Yeah, mm. yeah. It's got to. Uh, written by Ted Elliott, Terry Russio, and Stuart Beatty. Directed by Gore Verbinski. This is Disney's first PG-13 rated movie. Ooh. Like, or under the official okay. House of Mouse Disney. Because they own, like, they own a bunch of bullshit. They own, like, Touchstone Pictures mm-hmm. and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, I was going to say. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, I got you. This is the first, like, you know, with the whole, like, castle intro, basically. For that sure. ends up being PG-13. Oh, gotcha. Wow. Huh. It is the 10th highest grossing franchise of all time. Really? Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. Was the first movie also to ever premiere at a theme park. It premiered at Disneyland in the Pirates of the Caribbean, like, area of the park. I just learned, oh, I just learned that, so too. Cool. That would have yeah. been so, so cool. So cool there is there. a featurette that is the actual premiere, and then you can see people floating in water with a giant projection screen. Fuck. Yeah, it looks awesome. so fun. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Hell yeah. That's the way to watch it. Oh. I mean, I would have been a yeah. tiny, tiny baby, but if I could travel back <laughs> in time. You'd have been a happy baby now. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, I'll pass the reins over to Lauren, because I'm sure she's got a shit ton to say. About what? Just behind the scenes kind oh, of fun stuff. Oh, God. Any research? I, it, it is all from watching the second companion DVD, okay. which <laughs> I feel like is a very... Possibly much more reliable like stuff than a lot of the time you can get with movies because they decided to make essentially documentary style featurettes mm-hmm. to go along with this. There are two real ships that they used to film this, which is kind of incredible. Um, I don't even know where to fucking in here. If anybody else jump in. You want in. me to just pepper you want to just pepper in when you Yeah. Okay. Please. It took 5 months to build Barbosa's treasure cave. Oh yeah. And they spent so long filming in there, I think 3 weeks at least submerging this cave and something crazy like 10,000 gold coins were made for this movie. Did you did you see the part where the cast and crew like stole everything? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking pirates. <laughs> it, is. it had to be. And um, like building the cave, it's, I believe a lot of it is built in with styrofoam and then you fucking blow torch it mm-hmm. and that just shrinks it and burns it away and creates these really beautiful crags, mm. which I got to do on a place at one time, which was really fun. Should have been wearing a mask. Very toxic. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, uh, um, o- yeah. OSHA wants to have a word. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> David Lear. <laughs> Calling you out, bud. <laughs> he just texted me happy birthday, so he's on my mind. <laughs> um, it took over 50 makeup artists per day to get all the pirates made up and ready to roll. Mm-hmm. I think 
the there's a featurette with the makeup artist to talking about the specific makeup design where she started just it's just a really beautiful example of layerings of different like base colors and that she stippled on to create this like haggard wind worn look mm -hmm. did she win an academy award for them? i believe she did i'll quick do a double like i'll do a quick little internet search uh yeah. v nell why is that name in my mind because i watch these future <laughs> <laughs> Kira Knightley was only 17 during the filming of this movie and needed to have her mother or a guardian on set at all times. Almost w almost didn't film. Yeah. Didn't, didn't think she had it. Exactly. Also didn't want to be on, like, mess it up. Um, which makes this next fun fact more upsetting. Um, in addition to corsets and bustiers, uh, Miss Knightley uh, had painted cleavage. Um, which is a technique that was pioneered in the 20s and 30s during uh, mm -hmm. early, you know, rounds of filmmaking. And, uh, you know, Disney was like, why not? Like, this 17-year-old <laughs> isn't, uh, you know, built for this role. Let's, uh, let's build her, her up a little bit. I'd say perfected by the drag queens also. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Used, used heavily in 300. For yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just a little spray gun, actually. Oh, yeah. It's all, it's all painted on. Mm -hmm. It's great. You know what? That's funny. I'm not going to lie. I kind of yeah. Because I uh, wonder no more. Yeah. Yeah. Not, like, to, not to be that creepy guy. But uh, after learning this, I was watching the movie, yeah. like, and watching because yeah. I didn't. Watching for the cleavage. <laughs> I was, I was if you look really closely, it. you can. Uh, yeah. Uh, there, yeah there, there are some <laughs> scenes where her bust changes size dramatically. And yeah. it's, it's like. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot yeah. of close up shots of fucking around with the medallion slipped in there <laughs> oh yeah mm -hmm. uh yeah in and out and then like the scene where she's in like underneath the ship with will like bandaging his hand mm -hmm. and she's just like like a fucking washboard mm -hmm. yeah well i remember i saw i saw not um, that there's domino. anything wrong yeah. with that yeah i saw uh, domino that's and a then fucking I good movie that, i, I thought, fucking love when domino. i saw that movie i was like wait where'd they go what, 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 what happened? What happened? And then I like went back and I saw other stuff and I was like, oh no, she's always been like this. So what? It's just, it's just pirates that. Mm. No, I get it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Truly, movie magic. Yeah, the <laughs> Disney magic. Uh, Lauren and I nitpicked the CGI earlier, but one of the cool things about the CGI is uh, you know trying to skirt around like Disney's like <laughs> gore rules and things like that. They actually used images of turkey jerky as part of the uh, composition of the skin textures for the CGI to get like it looking really gnarly and kind of flaky and flawed uh, and whatnot. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just like some intern's bag of like Kirkland signature turkey jerky <laughs> and they're just like, oh, I'm gonna snap a couple pics of that and yeah, there it is. We, have a, we have a winner. Yeah, <laughs> looks like Barbosa's face is peeling off now. <laughs> um, I have Bob Anderson, who is the fight choreographer, is one of the most uh, renowned fight choreographers in Hollywood. He uh, has been doing it for over 50 years now and has worked with uh, the greats such as Errol Flynn. Yeah. Yeah, from mm. like the, yeah. the... Robin Hood. The talkies, yeah. 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 Wow. He also did Princess Bride. Yeah. Yeah, some of the best. I've got one that I learned um, studying this. There's an, an editing trick that's pretty amazing. Um, when Jack is um, doing the trick with the, the coins at the end and he's putting them back and he, he keeps one, Mm -hmm. They never filmed him keeping one. Oh, when they when they showed it to a test audience, they could, they didn't understand that he had kept one, so they had to figure out a way to make it look like he did. So if you rewatch it, when he palms the last coin, it's actually the reverse of him dropping a coin. It's in. a reverse shot. <laughs> it's two Whoa. really two really quick shots of him of a reverse of him doing the same thing he did before, and it just looks like he's palming it. Cool, completely Wild. fake. Interesting. I fucking love it. Great editing. Wow. Like That's really solved. cool, actually. Didn't have to go back and reshoot. And solved everything. Damn, editors are great. <laughs> I know. Disney magic. Pay me money. <laughs> also, um, not necessarily... Well, it's a little bit of trivia, but... Um, so, Ted Elliott, one of the writers... Um, I don't know if you guys saw this, but... Um, He's also wrote Shrek, mm. which I know I know you also really like as well, right? I love yeah. Shrek. I mean, we all... Who doesn't? But, but uh, yeah. But then... You know, and then Mask of Zorro, which you mentioned. Yeah. 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 Really? Um, yeah, but then also Godzilla for some reason. Huh. 
wild. Just what is the quality of work? When you work for work for a studio, you get thrown weird shit. Yeah. And I don't, I don't think you can pick what you work on, yeah. especially for Disney. Um, unless anyone's got anything else, I'm going to move on to alternative casting. For alternative casting, um, I have Robert De Niro turn down the role of Jack Sparrow because he thought it would flop. Because, uh, you know, since the <laughs> 70s, pirate movies were in decline, basically. And it was like, no, I'm not making a fucking pirate movie. That's going to... No, that's going to tank. Absolutely not. There was also Cutthroat Island, which came out in 95. Came out in 95, yeah. Totally mm. flopped. That's I, I funny, love... because in Stardust, he plays a pirate. Oh, that's why well, he did it. Uh, that's in 2007, so that's mm-hmm. right after, yeah. That's his agent kicking him and being like, yeah. no, 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 you're going to play a pirate now. This is going to happen. <laughs> this would be such a wildly different movie. Yes. Oh, yeah. Which is strange, because he's 80. Some He's 80. So he would have been 60? Oh, or, there's or weirder ones. 60? There's weirder ones than Bobby. Mm. Yeah. Um, Not older, though. Right. Just, maybe? On par. Uh, <laughs> he's got... one of the ones that keeps having kids, too. He just, he just had a kid. Yeah. Yeah. And Al Pacino. That's the other one. Yeah. Christopher Walken was considered. Oh, fuck off. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I can no. see that. I can see that a little bit. A little bit. Uh, ballet. <laughs> ballet. What is this ballet? Uh, I can't do a walk in very well. Uh, I'm going to stop. Cool. You should, st- yeah. you should stop. You should probably stop. Uh, Why is the room gone? Yeah. <laughs> Where to go? <laughs> I'd watch that. That was pretty good, actually. Yeah. I, yeah. I applaud. Yeah, that was yeah, great. I would, I would watch that. I we, would we too. Should, we should overdub. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Bobby doing Christopher Walken. Oh, he's just making the watch speech, but it's for the Aztec coin. <laughs> Bob, yeah. He hit that coin. Yeah. Up, Up his ass. ass. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I also have, um, for Jack Sparrow, everybody was considered, basically. Um, yeah, for sure. Yeah. You got Hugh Jackman, um, you know, throwing it back to the Princess Bride. You've got uh, Carrie Yules. You've got Matthew McConaughey, Ooh. Michael Keaton, and Jim Carrey. Which mm-hmm. I think would have been the closest to like what we ended up with. Yeah, that would have been great. Yeah. Uh, for Will, I've got Christian Bale. Yeah. J- Jude Law. Mm-hmm. Toby Maguire. Oh God. Ewan McGregor. Mm-hmm. And then the one that was literally nearly cast, like he had the part. Uh, they gave it to Heath Ledger. Mm. They literally like cast Heath Ledger and then they took it away though because uh, Lord of the Rings. Fucking Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Goddamn yeah. Lord of the Rings. Lord of, Lord of the Rings was blowing up and it was like, mm, what about that Bloom guy? Yeah. yeah. Let's bring him in. Let's have him read one more time. Let's get Legolas in here. Exactly. Mm. Uh, and then for Elizabeth, uh, some weird ones. Got Jamie Alexander, Jessica Alba. And then this is the weirdest one, Amanda Bynes. Uh. <laughs> oh, no. I don't know who that is. Uh, she's uh, famously she's from... She's the man. She's the man, but uh, all oh, that. that. She's from, yeah, uh, she's from uh, Nickelodeon's Take It, like a uh, Saturday Night Live sort of thing. Uh, Big Fat Liar? Big Fat Liar, yeah. What? She's... I wasn't in this country for, for the 90s. I kind of missed everything. So she, she was, was big then. Mm. Child star incredibly american this yeah. would have been fucking yeah a travesty actually <laughs> but i see why she was considered because she does have like at least back then you know mm. uh she had big <laughs> not so much now um but back then she had big disney energy so it was like very much like oh yeah she's like she's you know perfect for it because it's just like yo ho ho bottle of rum <laughs> you know kind of thing like she is very um like golden retriever like happy or did at the time yeah. i would say yeah. again this yeah. would have been at the time yeah right now she's going through some it's a rough time yeah. yeah it's kind of like a free britney situation yeah, so, enough, yeah. Bit is, yeah. Mm-hmm. um so she's going through it um but at the time it would have been a very, very different Elizabeth Swan. Also, I do not think she could pull off any sort of accents, so I wonder how they would have worked <laughs> that. That's insane. Yeah. yeah. I, don't, I don't know when to get into that, um, the accent part. Um, well, I'll find it later. No, it's it's a whole other s- subgenre of things. Um, got any more, Chuck? No, it's it for casting, personally. Right on. You got more? No, I just have a, a couple of usual suspects. Oh, yeah. I wasn't able to find that many, because this is, this is, for some reason, a largely British cast, an Australian cast. Mm. And we haven't had one of those movies yet, so, like, 
This is going to bridge a lot of gaps, I feel Yeah, like. oh, for sure. And especially with Johnny Depp. I mean, I mean yeah. we haven't had one of his movies. But um, my, I have a, a second degree connection with Johnny Depp and Paul Rubens. Right. Blow. From, from Blow, which was mm-hmm. talked about, in, um, which is pretty... One of my favorite films. And uh, third degree, uh, we have Legolas and Frodo. Patrick was in Eternal Sunshine. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Elijah Wood. Yeah. And that's that's all I could find. Yeah, that's kind of what... I didn't have anything. I There's like looked around. No. It's really small. Mm-hmm. And like you have to go pretty far deeper to find anything. But yeah, mm-hmm. I'm happy with that. Mm-hmm. And with that, let's go on to our second ad break. And make all our noises and drinks. And- yeah. Yee! All right, and we're back with Act Three, the award categories. We'll start with my new band name, and we're gonna start with Lauren. We sure are. <laughs> this is our favorite category. Just so, fan- <laughs> yeah. so the fans know, this is our favorite. I've category. been arguing for this category to get cut because <laughs> Chuck goes off so hard every single time. And when I listen, because I listen to the podcast, my heart sinks when I, he gets, all right, guys, I just have a few. <laughs> and I'm like, you need to be limited to like one or two each round and let the guests speak. Yeah. That being said, I only thought of one because I did this list this afternoon. Bootstraps, bootstraps. Nice. Ah, nice. Yeah. Was it a pirate themed? It is, yeah, shanty, but oh, yeah. I'm also thinking it's a girl group with, like, really heavy bass. Right on. Shanties. Modern shanties. Feminist shanties. There you go. Mm. Yeah. I'd be into that, for sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've got Mary Mother of God. Um <laughs> Um, it's probably already a thing. It's probably already a Christian rock band. But if it's not, then, then that's then that's mine. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Go Luke, ahead, Chuck. No, no. Right. Luke, you go first. Well, uh, mine's okay. <laughs> Bir- birthday person gets to say so. Yeah. Um, I only got a friendly pistol. When, when they're talking about getting left on the island, that, that pistol starts to look mighty friendly. Mm-hmm. Nice. That's good. Chuck, only one. <laughs> I've got Ooh. three. So choose your favorite one. <laughs> Aw. When well, he says three, he's I got, cut it down to three. He's got because 30. That's really impressive. Yeah, I know. Um, you fucking son of a bitch. <laughs> I'll run through them really fast. There's only three. Uh, I've got London Gasp. They're an EDM group. Mm. Um, and the quote is, women in London must have learned not to breathe. Gasp. It's in reference to like her corset, and her she too. gasps the second it gets taken off. <laughs> I've seen the movie. <laughs> uh, got three shillings, no name. They're a bluegrass folk band. It's when Jack bribes the dock officer. It's like, well, it's a shilling to park, and like, I need a name, son. And he's like, what about three shillings and no name? <laughs> he's like, perfect, John Smith. That's pretty deep. I like it. Yeah. And then my last one is Mutineers of Hell. They're a born again Christian rock band because they <laughs> used to be Satanists and now they've been like, you know, they've mutinized against hell. Um, and the quote is The deepest circle of hell is reserved for betrayers and mutineers. And then I have not a band name, but a fun fact. This better, is the first. It not be a band name. It is a band name. Uh, God this, damn it. <laughs> this movie is the first time I, I've come across it in the podcast so far. Um, but this is the first time that there is this category in real life so the rock metalcore band bring me the horizon oh yeah are named after the last line of dialogue in this film oh okay that was a cool that. fact i'm okay with i that. never knew that yeah i never it's knew a, that either until like it's fine don't cut it it's fine <laughs> it was actually like i was watching the film this time around and like literally like the last thing jack says and like He's like, you know, oh, da, 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 like, you know, mm. man, man, the mass, do this and that. And he's like, bring me the horizon. And yeah, I was like, I'm, oh, I'm motherfucker, I bet you that is. And then I looked it up and I was like, yep, wow, that is why they're called that's that. Cool. That's yeah. kind of cool. Yeah. And ad, ad lib <laughs> line as well. Mm-hmm. That entire. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He, he kind of just let the camera roll on, on Johnny Depp. I mean, I figure there's probably a lot of that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Maybe. Mm-hmm. I don't know. But I know that part is that's, that's nice. What I learned. Mm-hmm. Uh, updated movie title. Does it make any sense to. Name it anything other than the ride. Um. Yeah. I mean, like, 
if it came out today and it was like not necessarily trying to get you into Disneyland, just calling it the Black Pearl. Well, they 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 added the subtitle halfway through production um, because they thought it might do well. Yeah, I think the title itself is the like pre presumption that we are going to fucking franchise. Mm-hmm. Right. So yeah, it's kind of hard. I was thinking about it. I'm like, yeah, like you could call it something else, but this is. I think it's a solid name. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, Gore Verbinski was fucking pissed when he found out that they subtitled it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, really? Like, yeah, because mm-hmm. it was supposed to, like, the whole time he was working on the movie, directing, editing, doing the whole thing, it was just the Pirates, Pirates of the Caribbean. Caribbean. And then it was mm-hmm. literally like a fucking corporate slap in the face. Like, he went to, like, you know, the premiere, basically, <laughs> and it was just like, Curse of the Black Pearl. And he's like, Motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> also, Caribbean or Caribbean? You say Caribbean when referring to the movie. You say Caribbean, Caribbean when referring to the, real life. Yeah, <laughs> is that accurate? Well, what's the proper? Yeah, what's the proper? Caribbean? I think the people down there call it Carib. They don't even say Caribbean. So, no, no, in America, Luke. <laughs> that's what I'm asking. Caribbean is. He was American. gone for all of the <laughs> yeah, '90s. He doesn't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I don't know. You'd have to ask. Uh, it's it's an Americanism, I think, for sure. The word itself, like. Why do we say it different, though, do you think? Because we, we're dumb. Oh, uh, cool. Yeah. yeah, that makes that sense. It's, yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's, one of those, it's one of those words where you read but never hear, so mm-hmm. you don't know how to say it. Mm-hmm. There are a lot of bees and, like, too many things. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Also, yeah, what do you go with? Do you go... And then the people who live there call themselves by where they live. Like, if you're from Puerto Rico, yeah. you're Puerto Rican. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like, or, yeah. uh, Carib is, is just a... Like Creole, it's like a, a blanket term. Mm-hmm. It really, to my knowledge, anyways. Um, but I've always heard it as Pirates of the Caribbean. And you go to the Caribbean for the vacation. Yeah, Caribbean was a it was a marketing thing, I think. Mm. I've never heard it in anything other than like a cruise ship mm. commercial as Caribbean, like Caribbean cruises. Mm. Yeah, I've always ever heard of it as Caribbean. Even Billy Ocean is Caribbean Queen. Caribbean queen. <laughs> um, the first thing I thought of, just because it kind of seems to, to fit, we bring it up every time, but just how things nowadays are so simplified, right? Mm-hmm. And so the first thing that popped in my head naturally was like, oh, it just be called pirates. And then I remembered, oh, no, that's like the most famous. Whoa, thing. whoa, whoa, Yeah, I was whoa. like, that, that already exists. Taking um, away from the quintessential <laughs> hit film Pirates, uh, yeah, 2007. Yeah, 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 I was like, oh, wait, never mind. <laughs> I think you um, could probably just go with the Curse of the Black Pearl if you wanted to simplify it. Yeah. You can get rid of the marketing up front. Yeah. Just think, yeah. yeah. It was great because then like my next thought was the tale of Captain Jack Sparrow. And then I just thought of Lonely Island and Michael Bolton, <laughs> which is uh, still one of the best songs ever written. Love it. So um, good. But yeah. But I, but I, but I think oh, I think that could work. The Tale of Captain Jack Sparrow. I think they would yeah. still do that. Yeah. Sure. Uh, the Roger Deakins Would Be Proud Award for Cinematography. Anything stand out to anybody? Uh, I mean, as Chuck pointed out, there are some really gorgeous, like, establishing shots that could definitely be cut, but goddamn so beautiful it's hard to not film something beautiful when you're out there yeah like, just it they like i feel like this is increasingly rare of people filming actually on location yeah. oh, because yeah. it's expensive and it's impractical and mm-hmm. all these things but yeah. it does make such a difference like it's it imparts like an energy or a feeling or something like that and yeah um but standout actual shots are from the sacking of Port Royal, we have the Black Pearl firing through the fucking fog and blowing the shit out of the yeah. walls. Mm-hmm. And it is so beautiful. There's like moon, there's stars, there's fog, and this. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, that's really, really pretty. I will also say, like, the Jack Sparrow, like, entrance shot is one of my favorite things, which, you know, inspired a later category. So mm. I'll leave that for that. <laughs> um, it's just, honestly, it's a really visually pleasing movie to watch most yeah. of the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's good. I liked the, uh, the stealing of the Interceptor. Mm-hmm. Jumping yeah. from one ship to the other. Oh. Um, and also cutting the ropes, like... <laughs> 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it's a nitpick of mine, but it, it kind of has to be filmed that way. And they do it for a reason, but they for the golden hour shots, uh, Captain Norrington and, and Gillette going, you know, it's the greatest pirate I've ever seen. When it's clearly sunset, and then they cut back to it's noon, yeah, <laughs> and it's just back and forth between oh. the, the really different times of day that really like stand out to me. But I understand why they did it, and um, mm-hmm. I still just think it looks pretty. I don't know. Thought it was fun. It all looks so pretty. Mm-hmm. Yeah, literally, my note was boats on oceans for this category. <laughs> like, anytime there's a boat on the ocean, and it's like the one of the shots, I was like, it's clearly like on location. Like, yeah, oh. yeah. But even the other stuff, I mean, it looks great. It doesn't there's you know, some so beautiful shots of the black pearl chasing the interceptor with the fog rolling in behind mm-hmm. and you see both of them mm-hmm. and the open ocean just like rolling with them Ugh, so good the, the respect to the film crew and every and everybody acting um for dealing with the seasickness and all that stuff that they must sure. have gotten oh yeah and then on a on a rigged ship there are ropes and lines everywhere the maneuvering around that with any kind of nightmare. camera equipment, fucking hell! Can't imagine how they did it. No, especially having to reshoot everything because it's like you shoot it with actors, then you shoot it as like an empty plate so you can do your CGI zombies later, and it's like ugh. Yeah. Hmm. Um, personally, yeah, mine are both. Aside from just this being like a you know one hundred and one crash course of like how to shoot aqu- action sequences, um, mine are both match cuts. I've got the match cut of young Elizabeth to adult Elizabeth in the yeah. intro. Right on. Where you cut from like child to yeah. her waking up. Um, and then I have one of my favorite shots in the entire film, probably my favorite shot, period, is the sliver of light over Elizabeth hiding and just like just barely oh, touching yeah. her eye in and cheek and lip in the cabinet. Yeah. And then that is match cut perfectly to a mirror image of the pirate peering in through said crack in the door. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then you get the best, you know, you get, hello, pop it. Mm. Which, don't worry, that was a band name. We cut it out because we need to tighten this bit. (laughs) (laughs) I think I'd like to also throw in there during the, like, final, final fight when Jack and Barbosa are crossing swords, they go in and out of light. And there's just, like, gold thrown in the air. And it's like v- the action in this movie is shot really fucking beautifully, actually. Mm-hmm. It's kinetic, it moves with them. Mm-hmm. And as these as the folks are moving around fighting each other, you you feel the momentum growing and building. So I really like that. And there are like a couple like longer shots in that that kind of follow them as they're like going up and down these rocks and like throwing things at each other and this and that. Um, that I think are so fun and just, you know, it's a good time. <laughs> you started that with saying you wanted to throw something. I thought you were going to throw something at Chuck for mentioning a band name. But, uh, uh, no. Yeah, no, I totally agree. We'll, we'll save that for after the pod. <laughs> <laughs> Some That's for the flying, Patreon. Flying yeah. elote. And just me getting flogged. <laughs> uh, is that Channing Tatum and a dog collar? Um, yeah. We probably all have the same one. Uh, say Zoe that. Saldana? Yeah. yeah. Zoe yeah. Saldana. Yeah. yeah. I think it's Zoe Saldana. Yeah. Oh, you're right. Saldana. Yeah. That's just Saldana. Very, very rarely do they put the Enya on. And that's right. like kind of mm-hmm. disrespectful. Because it's her name? Because it's her name. And yeah. yeah. She's actually, I think she's actually from <laughs> yeah, uh, she Caribbean. Is. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think she, I'm not going to say it because I don't know. So I won't. Which, uh, yeah, I can't remember if it's Puerto Rican or um, Dominican. I think Dominican. Probably mm-hmm. Dominican. Yeah. Which, another fun fact, um, this movie almost made her quit acting. Yeah. She had an awful fucking time. It's a very unforgiving part, actually, in a lot of ways, because she's just like... She's got three speaking parts, and those are her only three scenes. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, like... She I, gets to slap Johnny Depp, though. So pretty good. It's good. Mm. Mine was different. Mine is... Uh, Dad, Jonathan oh. Price. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's great. Nice. Which I don't know if everybody feels that way about him, like he's an unknown. But I watched a lot of um, oh, like mother- British period movies when I was a kid. Sure. And he has like popped up in a thousand and one of those. Mm-hmm. I think he's also in like what is that Terry Pratchett uh, like? Terry Pratchett. Terry Gilliam. Yes. 
Uh, Brazil. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah, he's yes. uh, the lead in Brazil. And he's, uh, yeah, phenomenal. Jonathan Price is an amazing oh, yeah. character actor, dramatic actor. He is. And I feel like he was, this might have been my exposure to him as a child, mm-hmm. like for the first like real time where I was like, the connecting okay. dots yeah, kind yeah. of thing. Um, but yeah, so he saw Don. He was, yeah. he was my second pick for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, but and I, I love that he's followed through in the, the second and third films as well. Yeah. I also right. love that I said Terry fucking Pratchett. <laughs> Jesus. Fuck. Also, I got him confused with someone. I, re- I redact my oh motherfucker. Uh, <laughs> I thought I had a... Uh, I also really like Jack... Suspicious it's Jack connection. Davenport, right? Commodore Norrington? Yeah. Yes. Because he's popped up in a handful of different things to not very widely known. I think this is his biggest thing for sure. Big in British film. Yeah. Yeah. There's also like a sitcom that he was involved in, which is like the British equivalent of Friends, kind of, I think. Okay. I think I remember hearing about that, yeah. <sighs> I don't remember the name. Billy Piper's in it um, from Doctor Who. Mm. And the theme song is like, perhaps, perhaps, perhaps. Da, da. Enough <laughs> of that. <laughs> Anybody else? You, uh, we're um, actually, way. mine is the one eyed pirate who's also in the UK. The American office. Yeah, the, or the, 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 the UK, UK office. office. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Crook. Yeah. Mackenzie, I forgot about that. Yeah. yeah. Oh. I, was like, I was like, oh, that's nice. right. Yeah. <laughs> Mackenzie. Mackenzie Crook. Yeah. Yeah. He's, mm-hmm. he's great. Yeah. Uh, great he's, character actor. Yeah. Also, do you know about the eye? Tell us about the eye, Lauren. Oh, the prosthetic that he had to go in to have the wooden eye thing. Oh, no. Absolutely fucking excruciating. So most of the pirates were wearing contacts to make them um, that like kind of jaundice yellowy right. look. So they're all wearing basically really uncomfortable yellow contacts. Full mm-hmm. eyeball contacts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not just the like. Oh, it's not the lens. It's yeah. the whole thing. Yeah. Um, and then him specifically, and he appears in subsequent films doing this uncomfortable eye work as well. So yeah. hats off to him. Uh, just this giant prosthetic covering his eyeball. And then, yeah, he gets forked in the eye and yeah. it actually moves around, which is a that's a cool effect. I liked it. I really liked <laughs> yeah. that. So they built like a very special thick prosthetic for him. And it's it's like a trick cut kind yeah. of thing where he gets forked in the eye. But it he actually has a prosthetic with the okay. like thing moving around. It's not a special effect. Right on. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's one of my favorite scenes when they're, they're filling their cannons with whatever they have. Yeah. You know, the cannonballs. <laughs> I, Yeah. Also, the sequels are really fun because the like ragtag crews mm-hmm. come together and you get the mashup of all your favorite hits coming yeah. together. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, it's a what? super group. <laughs> Next year we do Pirates 2. Like, why wait a year? Yeah. Oh, thank God you said it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a sailboat. Huh. Uh, it was just kind of ironic. Yeah, I, I very wrote down, I wrote down this one. Very snooty. It's, it, it's actually a galleon. That's what yeah. it's called. <laughs> <laughs> It's not, it's not a schooner. It's not a. It's not a, a schooner. Not, it's not a cutter. Sailboat. It's just a galleon. But no, I didn't have. I didn't write anything serious down. Did you guys have anything? No. Uh, um, it's a literal boat. Like when Jack's on the beach, like they're marooned. He's talking about, you know, what the Black Pearl is is freedom. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. And so I think a lot of the overarching theme of the movie, other than it's fucking dope and it's really fun and we're all having a great time (laughs) is that you are seeing like colonialism and this encroaching British imperialism come in and it's starting to choke out the way of life of the pirates Mm -hmm. and everybody else obviously those features they're not featured in the film of the native people being affected by this very little yeah but the focus being of like this driving relentless force coming in and kind of crushing this free way of life and so it's like a slow like pressure building um and then this representation of freedom and there is a code there are some morals to it but um well, it's very true. I, mean, I think it's there's there's far more morals than most people think. Um, the representation of pirates that we have is very, very much Disney. 
mm. and um, Treasure Island. Mm-hmm. And the films from the, the 40s to 50s, were, which is probably now where I can get into the accent of the, of the traditional pirate that we think of, is actually the accent of the uh, most famous, I should have looked up his name, but he's the most famous actor to portray a pirate in the 40s and 50s, which is the first time people heard somebody portraying a pirate. Mm. But he sounds like an, a southern English farmer. Mm-hmm. Which pirates were not, <laughs> so the whole yeah, ac- the whole yeah, pirate yeah. accents fake. It, that's a movie accent. The second thing people um, misconstrue is that they're just very killy, rapey, no code, no morals. That's that's in large part the propaganda from the East India Trading Company. Sure, portrayed as privateers. So like. The version we're getting in this film is very much more accurate than what people have been led to believe. Um, not to defend them, you know, to the end, but like the actual colonials were far more aggressive and damaging than privateers ever were. Mm. Yeah, which I know they get more into until like the sequels and stuff too. With like, yep. the, I mean, yeah, it comes mm-hmm. in the next yeah. film. Yeah, yeah. that yeah. was I was really surprised they fucking let that right. happen. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anybody else? Yeah, mine's weak. Um, I like Lauren's way more. Um, <laughs> mine is just greed will always be your downfall. Sure. It's like not, you know, like hoarding your wealth and whatnot and will cause you to become a zombie pirate. Uh, <laughs> I think that's so weak also. It's very because, weak. Because no, like anybody weak. given the opportunity would have had well, done the same. Yeah, the exactly. Thing. Like the only reason that Jack isn't like a zombie like them, as he says, is because he got marooned on the fucking island for being yeah. a bad captain. Yeah, exactly. Also, I guess this should have ended up in nitpicks, but like envisioning him being a higher status character than Barbosa is really challenging for me. Oh, yeah. That's another. Uh, mm. That's another a weird um, thing that doesn't get addressed in the in the films. There's, uh, yeah, I don't even know if I want to get into it here. <laughs> the The ship's captain wasn't the highest ranking person on a boat. What? No, he was uh, ship's captain was solely in charge of sailing. That was mm. pretty much it. Um, mm. I forget. I think it's either the master at arms or the the uh, the bosun were the, like the lead pirate. Oh, that's strange. And there's a, there's a very strange um, relationship between those two people when it comes to sailing a ship to go collect booty, that kind of deal. <laughs> yeah, brother. <That's> right. <laughs> mm-hmm. I had to, we haven't we haven't said the word yet. I had to throw it out. But yeah, it's um, yeah having them interact with each other and imagine their power mm. dynamic is absolutely is very strange. Batch, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the Hans Gruber Deathfall Award. I know y'all are going to say fucking Barbosa. All right. <laughs> but, and I pretty much agree, but I also want to shout out the white dreadlock wook pirate motherfucker who gets a bomb <laughs> oh. shoved inside of him and blows yeah. up. It's not fair. The guy with the beard, yeah. That's my favorite one, personally. That's, yeah, that's a better nice. one. It's more entertaining. Yeah. yeah. Then I'm cold. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. I yeah. also really enjoy the the hook guy of say goodbye and getting goodbye. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I was gonna say <laughs> goodbye. If it's any consolation, I didn't just have Barbosa. I had I had the entire zombie pirate like team having that moment of realization, which is actually like kind of somber oh yeah like that moment where they all like come to terms with their mortality and then just slowly just get like hacked off one by one also shout out uh dad in the hand (laughs) (laughs) uh elizabeth swan's dad uh fighting oh yeah yeah yeah. the uh what was it uh, that would i i would say that's reanimator yeah Yeah, exactly oh the reanimator yeah yeah and he like opens the drawer and it's like you imagine it's like a real hand you're like oh yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, Idle Hands is coming soon. Right I would love to do that for uh, Oogie Spooky Times. Oh, yeah. I love Jonathan Price so much, and yeah. his reaction to that is like one of my favorite moments in the movie where he's just like. <gasps> yeah. <laughs> uh, controversial hot take. Um, Waterworld <laughs> is not a bad movie. <laughs> Go off. Yeah, so. Go off, King. <laughs> Um, no, I'm just kidding. No, I had, um, well, you know what? I, I mean, mine has changed now since you had your little spiel about the accuracy of pirates. 
Yeah. But mine um, was just like, I don't think we should be rooting for Jack Sparrow and the Pirates. But I was like, well, I, I recommend looking into it. There's this great book. Um, it's It sounds way worse than it is, but it's called, um, I think it's called Sodomy in the Pirate Piratical Tradition. Mm. Mm-hmm. And it is the actual lore and history of privateers. Nice. And it goes into like, they had, they had like, they were far more progressive than we give them credit for because nobody there were a lot of like it. fucking women leaders right, yeah. Yeah. right to hear that there, there were women there was there were the rules there was no bringing women on board there was no taking advantage of women there was no rape there was mm-hmm. no there was like that was like a big deal you get hung for that wow mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um yeah there was like yeah i recommend everybody you don't have to read it all because it's pretty long but like just checking out a, a video on it maybe I'll, I'll find one and send it to you guys yeah, i'll, I'll post cool. it along with this because it's like that. People have a huge misconception of it because the only thing we have about pirates in our culture, other than this movie, is um, Treasure Island, the book, which well, all the movies are based on. Mm-hmm. The Muppets Treasure There's Island. The, <laughs> sorry. Those is there another ones. one? Sorry. Jim Henson presents Treasure Island. <laughs> I also had an affinity for the book Kidnapped by Robert Louis Stevenson. Are y'all familiar with this? A little bit. Familiar there with the is... gentleman, not a kidnapped mm-hmm. there is a very early disney movie also adapting this which is light trash um but <laughs> it's a good book actually it's fast too it's like a novella and it's fun pirate stuff thanks fun pirate stuff fun pirates. oh god i mean i was a pirate do you hate me <laughs> i fucking love you thanks I was going to say, keeping the divide between me and Javi, which also in the Patreon, you know, um, Team Javi, <laughs> Team Chuck, you decide with your dollars. Um, Is this a thing? Do I need to check out the Patreon? You do oh, need yeah. to check out the Patreon. Yeah. You um, everyone, yeah, well, I to Oh my God. Don't worry, you Javi. I got you. <laughs> um, I had, for a controversial hot take, those colonizing bastards of the British Royal Freet, Fleet, uh, not the Freet, or the royal feet. Uh, the colonizing <laughs> bastards of the British hey. royal fleet uh, totally deserve feet. to be taken down by those zombie pirates. Oh, yeah. I've yeah. got the royal feet for you right here. <laughs> Presenting the royal feet. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, would, I, no. Would, I would choose the pirates over any of the colonials. Oh, yeah. They're more fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're less likely to completely subjugate you after you're done fighting for them. Word. Fair enough. Yeah, you're you're more likely to profit and live a rich life. There's also Captain Morgan, is is a good story to. I mean, a lot of this is based on that. Captain Morgan was a privateer, was eventually, they couldn't the British couldn't defeat him, so they hired him and made him governor of Jamaica. And then he made the worst rum we have on existence. Pretty bad rum. <laughs> but, uh, but that that's how the British couldn't defeat piracy, so they bought them. Mm. And that, that's kind of like uh, a common story. Like, it happened many, many times. Hmm. Fucking wild. What category are we in right now? Uh, we're oh, going, we're going on to Time for Another Spider-Man Award. What? Is it time for a remake? Uh, Re- uh, a sequel? Ha- it's happening, I, I know, guess. It's, like, we, we were talking before this. The sixth it's, one it's is in... Jenna Ortega? Oh, there's a sixth one coming out? Yeah. Well, they're, they're pre-production. Because of the strike and stuff, they're kind of halted. Oh, you said Jenna Ortega? Jenna Ortega's um, rumored to be like the lead. Perhaps, Damn it. perhaps daughter of. Probably. Uh, Probably, yeah. Makes sense. They both wear the Spur. same amount of eyeliner. They do, yeah. <laughs> Coincidence? <laughs> I think not. My scream queen. Mm. Ah, damn it! Probably have to go see it now. Well, it won't, it won't be done for years. I know. And it'll probably be written by AI, so you won't like it. Yeah. yeah. And they'll definitely have to paint the cleavage on, so you'll <laughs> love that. Um, in reference to this question, I said, no, let this fucking franchise die. And I was like, but I would love to see more adventure films and pirate movies, just not necessarily in this line. Yeah. The, uh, I, I will, mean- yeah. In conversation to the sequels, I remember this is so fucking embarrassing. <laughs> oh god. Um leading up to the release of the second Pirates of the Caribbean movie, I grew deeply excited. I in fact had a party the night that we could go see the midnight premiere. Had some friends over. 
there were decorations that I had per- like personally purchased out of like <sighs> savings oh. from my little <laughs> my tiny little teenage like doing some chores and I'd made some savings. I thought you said this was embarrassing. It's very I feel embarrassed. That's not a guess. I would have been there. Yeah. Uh yeah. I also the most vivid memory is like I got a Pirates of the Caribbean two calendar <laughs> calendar <laughs> before it came out and I uh, had crossed off the days counting down to yes. the release. Wow. <laughs> I love this. Wow. That's fandom right there. I yeah. like that. I was so fucking hyped for this. I was so excited. And you know what? The second one, it, it holds up in a lot of ways. Oh, yeah. So uh, look forward to doing that on the podcast. One, one two, and three are fine with me. Yeah. Yep. 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 Mm-hmm. They're, uh, yeah. Um, I have a soft no, just because personally i'm kind of always up for a reboot but the thing is like i don't want it right now yeah See, that, that's where i like to do that's where i distance myself and go, whoa, whoa, whoa. i'm not one of those guys that's i don't what, want the reboot right now i want them to whatever fine shell out the six one and then stop what's what i'm hoping 20 the six years one. from now i want to be like yeah. you know whatever kids or whatever like, okay like, hey, oh the, they're gonna remake pirates of the Caribbean. you know i'm always down for it um they usually fail but for some reason i always still have this hope and i always hold out like no guys trust me trust me the the Whatever remake is gonna be great. It looks great. Right. And then I go watch. I'm like, ah, fuck. <laughs> but so no, we don't really need one. But if they announced one 20 years from now and they hadn't made any in a while, I I'd think go watch it. Also, a lot of the times, the problem with reboots is if they get people involved who are involved with the first one, it is nostalgic, and that is a fucking fault. Fucking wash the slate. Mm-hmm. Do it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Do it from yeah. the intention of. I know the soul of this and I have a different story to tell and I can do it with the same energy without feeling cliched and tied to the past. Like, let's do it fresh. Let's do it again. Yeah. That's why the new Dune movie is working, guys. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah, I want a reboot, not a remaster, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Do it in the future. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Cyberpunk. (laughs) Cyber pirates. On to the Sonic Death Monkey Top 5. What are your top five all-time movies with the best character introductions? I literally was revising my list as we've been recording. Um, yeah. You want to go? Sure. Um, so right now, as it stands, before uh, we you know give me time to fix it again. <laughs> I just also want to say that my proposition was this establishing shot and not thinking necessarily about verbal character introductions because most of the greatest character introductions are like there's a voiceover, there's something leading into it that has this thing. Um, and I've also revised. That's fine. That's greatly. the great thing about this section is that it's completely uh, up to interpretation. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But Jack it's, it's, Sparrow sailing in, yeah. much to your chagrin, on a ship with no so you sail. Like a visual, so which, which, uh, yeah. The, the damn it, got it wrong again. No, no, <laughs> no it's no. how you interpret it. <laughs> yeah, like he is stood well, there, and you see that, and you think he's on this giant ship, and mm-hmm. he like. It's no, it's a great introduction. I love it. It's, it's one of the best, in, honestly. In, it's impractical as fuck, but I, I totally get it. It's so much fun. Well. <laughs> All right, Chuck, fire off. Fire off? Okay. Number five, I've got Captain Spaulding in House of a Thousand Corpses. Okay. <laughs> oh. It's just like you see him as just like he's just a goofy like store clerk, almost like a convenience store worker, like, and then he gets held up. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, you get the whole fun like, fuck you, fuck me, fuck you, like kind of thing, like, fuck your daddy, like that whole thing. <laughs> Um, yes. And then he pulls the gun and takes out the robbers and whatnot. And you get like, you know, you get everything you need to know about this character for the entire rest of the franchise from that one little like four minute interaction. Good old Sid Haig. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Rest in peace. Yep. Uh, number four, I've got AJ in Barbarian. I don't know if you guys saw Barbarian. Oh, oh yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. So you've got this. Not even a cold open. It's oh, see, the, the, the like first the act second, of the film. It's the second act open. It's a second yeah. act open, yeah. So you get the entire first act of the film, like, you know, the dread. You get the establishing of like where all of the terror is gonna take place in the horror movie and whatnot. 
And then we get this hard cut to our new ca- our new protagonist, our new character, and he is just the most carefree yeah. asshole you have ever met. He's just cruising down yeah. PCH, singing Ricky Ticky Tavi, and just like having a great time. And like, let me get this phone call. I'm like, hello. It's like, what? no, I didn't. I didn't assault anybody. That's <laughs> no, that's hearsay. And then like, second he hangs up, you're like, oh, this guy's a piece of shit. He totally assaulted somebody. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Does it's he just crash great. or pull over? He pulls over. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, my number three is Debo in Friday. <laughs> <laughs> because he's it's almost like the shark in Jaws he's spoken of in like just like almost so like true. almost like Voldemort-esque like so you true. cannot like you know oh you know yeah. he will come by we can't like make eye contact yada yada and it's like I'm not afraid of him yes you are and then the first time you see him you don't even see him you see his bicycle tires yeah and instantly, it's just fear on every character in the film's face as he's slowly creeping up. And then, yeah, you get your actual introduction where it's like... Knowing yeah. how they made that movie and kind of like... They didn't mm-hmm. just throw it together, but they had to like really work to get it made and like mm-hmm. come up with everything. It's, it's super impressive. Yeah, you're right. Mm-hmm. It's very much like he's the shark in Jaws. Yeah. <laughs> My number two is The Jesus from The oh, Big Lebowski. Oh, okay. Yes. yes. Fucking eight-year-olds, dude. Um, <laughs> we shouldn't have let him go first. He's a fucking cunt. Oh, that's fine. Uh, yeah. No, it's so good. I, I love like, this. I love that it's like he literally, you just see him as Walter the, is just tongue. describing yeah. everything about him as he licks the ball and like, yeah. And I love that you get this whole description of him being a sex offender and like all this and then the first thing out of his mouth is, we're gonna fuck you guys so hard. And like, <laughs> They're doing the ball cleaning. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think that's my favorite one. And then yes. my number one, um, which I promise that I'm not uh, an incel, my number one <laughs> is uh, the Joker in The Dark Knight. Okay. Mm. Just for the intro yeah. shot of, like, literally you have all of the bank robbers yeah. just kind of working their way through, like, blowing each other away. Like, well, boss said, once I finish this gig, I just take that guy out. Da, da, da. And then finally you end with, well, boss said, and then it's boss. Mm. Mm. Nice. That's so well done. Yeah, I like that one. Those are all great. I love all those. Yeah. Thank you. Nice. Abby? Cool. Yeah, I'll give mine. Um, my number five, I have The High Evolutionary in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Haven't seen it yet. Uh, which, okay, well, I won't spoil it. Well, yeah, it just, ah, it sucks. I can't talk about it. If I'm you like, can't. No, I don't spoil care. it. I don't give a shit. Talk yeah, about I it. No, it. I mean, I mean, it's just the only time that I can remember that in theaters I have verbally been like, Fuck this guy! Like, like, it literally, and it was seconds, seconds into the film. They did such a good job of yeah. seconds of the film establishing, like, hey, you want this guy to die? And I said, yes, right, right now. What? I have two and a half hours left. No, <laughs> fucking kill this guy right now. Nice. And just awful. He's not a human being. He's an alien or whatever. But yeah. awful, just person. Like, yep. just instantly. Again, seconds into the film, you're like, worst person they, ever. They had to. They I know had... everything I need to know about him. Kill him right now. <laughs> they, they had to one up Thanos, so yeah. he's like the new yeah. Thanos. Yeah, they had to like make him the big and he bad. Did and such a great he's super job good. Too. Yeah, just, oh, um, yeah. Um, number four, I have uh, the Batman in the Batman. Oh yeah, you know, yeah. and it just uh, that intro with him monologuing and you know very noir and talking about him being in the shadows and or, no, I am the shadows. Yeah, it's oh so good, so good. <laughs> and it was just cool because again, we'd seen this so many times, so like. What a cool new little spin to put on it and to you know, get you engaged again. Yeah. Um, uh, and then I have Darth Vader in New Hope. Classic. I think yeah. just, you know, again, mm-hmm. it's kind of a similar thing. And within seconds, you're like, oh, don't mess with that guy, you know? Um, so that's what I got. Um, number two, I have Don Corleone and The Godfather. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, again, it's just, you know, it's funny because, again, even if you've never seen The Godfather, you know about The Godfather. But then when you, even when you actually sit down and watch it, you still are like, whoa, whoa. Again, again, kind of the Darth Vader thing, like just opening shot, you know, like, oh, this guy is somebody. He's yeah. somebody, mm-hmm. you know? Have and he... then you got him with the pet and the cat and yeah. the whole soft-spoken, but also still, you know. Menacing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Have yeah. you guys watched The Godfather recently? Yes. I watch it all the time. Because. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's on a loop in his house. Yeah. yeah. I think around the holidays, I went on, it was just like a stint and it was godfather like casino goodfellas all of the mm. the the italian gangster like throw down mm-hmm. <sighs> i have a lot of feelings about these movies and i think they are all deserving of being on this podcast 
past. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. For sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Especially the, the Departed. That would be my Christmas yep. wish is to do The Departed. That might have to be like a, a double episode. It's Ooh, like there's a yeah. lot in that movie. There's mm-hmm. five freaking top tier actors in that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Are you a co <laughs> um, And my number one, you guys had to see it coming. I got um, uh, Hans Landa in yeah. Inglorious Bastards. Fuck I you. knew it. You know, it's funny because it's like the opposite. You know, instead of getting you know a couple seconds, you get this fucking almost thirty minute like opening with him. And yeah, oh, yeah. That just, is one just, of my favorite scenes, like ever committed to film. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I saw this movie in theaters with my mother, who is <laughs> the worst person to ever see this movie in theaters with, because she constantly was asking, "Why are they being so mean to each other?" Yeah, and <laughs> I was fucking wrapped. I was in my seat grabbing the armrest watching this opening scene because it's one of the best scenes yeah in cinema history in my opinion actually in terms of just watching this oh my god okay mm-hmm. good choice yeah. Yeah, yeah, and Super also good. fuck you <laughs> yeah. <laughs> lauren uh yeah uh so these guys chose some of the things but what i will say is uh, Saturday Night Fever of John Travolta fucking jiving down the goddamn street <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. is one of the really cool establishing shots. It's also like the opening credits of the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, I got the song in my head yeah. already. <laughs> yeah. And Hannibal Lecter. Mm-hmm. She is walking oh, down these right. stairs. She's being warned. She's being like fucking screamed and jizzed at. Maybe that, yeah. or is that on the way out? Maybe makes it's on the way out. I think it's, it's on her second visit. Yeah, uh, she's got, yeah. But it's all this build up and anticipation, and finally this character turns around. So that's hello, Clarice. Hello, Clarice. Oh, that's so good. That's a really good one. Um, what else was it? The Indiana Jones introduction in the first one mm-hmm. is a classic. Because mm-hmm. you just see him go in there and snatch the little gold guy. And then, yeah, these other guys took some other ones. Which ones so. did we steal? Uh, definitely the Hans Landa one. Mm-hmm. Um, and then... The Jesus? Yeah. Yeah. I think that was maybe my top one actually because it is so physical Mm -hmm. i feel like that like you get such a deep sense of the character just by watching him lick a fucking (laughs) and then polish it in between his legs yeah Mm -hmm. um yeah right on so there's some good ones well i uh i completely took this in a different direction misunderstood the question Good. Which is uh, typical, I think. It makes it more exciting. Yeah. (laughs) So I I take this to mean, um, what are your favorite, like, ensemble introductions? Oh. (gasps) Reservoir Dogs. (laughs) Well, for my number five, I got Smoke and Aces. Hell yeah. Um, Just at the way every character is introduced in that. They're Mm. very wildly different. Um, The the brothers, the the Nazi brothers, Mm -hmm. the, Mm -hmm. yeah, just the Ben Affleck. The way everyone's, yeah. Everyone's talking about everyone else because everyone knows who's going after the guy. Mm, right. Um, Do you have Ocean's Eleven in there? I thought about it, but I, I thought you guys might hate me for it because I, no. I would say Ocean's Eleven, Twelve, and Thirteen, but <laughs> <laughs> those are kind of my favorite movies. I um, love Ocean's Eleven. So number four, I have like a, a, a jumble of a, an ensemble, but it's um, City of Lost Children, Amelie, and Mick Max. Mm. Mm. Have you seen City of Lost Children? Yes, I have. Yeah. I think I literally bought it after one of you guys talked about it forever ago. Probably me. Yeah, probably, yeah. I'm a, I'm a Jean-Pierre Genet, huge fan. Yeah. He, he made Amelie. You've seen Amelie? I, yeah, of mm-hmm. course. So, uh, I mean, all of his other me. films are very much whimsical in the mm-hmm. same manner. City of Lost Children is like a, is a gothic masterpiece. I must watch it. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ron Perlman, a young Ron Perlman. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's fucking phenomenal. And the way characters are introduced... Um, Ron Perlman's a strong man. Mm-hmm. He's like a circus performer. Mm-hmm. City of Lost Children, a bunch of children being made to be pickpockets and thieves. 
by uh, the two twin women. When they act together, you got to watch it. I won't spoil okay. it for you. Um, phenomenal performance by the by the twins. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so that's my number four. Is like Jean Pierre Jeunet films. There, if, if you haven't seen Mick mm-hmm. Max, I recommend that as well. It's also I'm not. Um, yeah, just my favorite. Uh, number three, Royal Tenenbaums, where all the characters are introduced. Mm-hmm. You I'm know, an idiot. Um, yeah, that's really good. What's his name? Um, the narrator. Um, he's not in it, but um, the guy from Beetlejuice, the guy who got in trouble for shooting the blank at the woman and killing her. Oh, uh, Alec, Alec Baldwin. Baldwin. Alec Baldwin yeah. narrates. <laughs> Um, it's, yeah, but that, yeah. like he, narr- he narrates like he's reading the book and like mm-hmm. introducing all the characters. So that's yeah. that sticks in my mind. Uh, number two, uh, nineteen ninety six is Romeo and Juliet. Mm-hmm. That's good. <laughs> that's so good. For the good. way all the characters are introduced. Um, say, so, I mean, these are all like stylistic things. Oh, just yeah. the way that's cool. And then yeah. number one is Snatch. Um, yeah, the whole opening <laughs> credits are just all the main players are just shown right away with their yeah. names. It's yeah. Like, yeah. No, like Lauren was like, oh, yeah, like I don't know what to do. And I was like, just any Guy Ritchie film. Yeah, pretty mm-hmm. much. Was my answer to like when this question was first the like, you know, top five introductions. I it's, think Snatch is my favorite Guy Ritchie film, though, because it's fun. And yeah, I love Smoky Jesus. I just rewatched that like unprovoked recently. <laughs> uh, well, we're doing it soon. Yeah, if you wanna, it's on our list. You want to be our guest? We'll have you on there. Hmm. Yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> right on. So uh, we'll move on to who won the movie. Jeffrey Rush. Yeah, that's who I had too. Uh, I had Jeffrey Rush as Barbosa because uh, he's just so grounded in the character. Um, we could still pull this movie off without Jack Sparrow. We can't pull it off without Barbosa because, like, it wouldn't be as good if it was just Will and Liz. But you could do just Will and Liz. You just have to make Will less white knighty and lame. Yeah. Hmm. Javi? I had Johnny Depp. Yeah. I just, you know, I mean, I know he was already, you know, he was already the guy, but this just made him be the guy in everything. So yeah. I don't know if we won, but he definitely won. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He um, also, like, this character is cemented as one of the most iconic characters, for better or for worse. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. The impressions, all of the stuff is yeah. like on par with fucking Borat or some of that <laughs> shit. And, yeah. and, and, and it's cool because I think he, he said too that that's like his favorite character too. That he mm-hmm. like he just loves it and he's like, oh, I would play him like. Well, he dresses up as him in the real world and visits yeah. sick kids in uh, hospitals. Like, yeah. That's, yeah, that's like it's transcended the film, which is great. So, yeah. 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 He also decided to keep the gold teeth that got <laughs> capped on after like the second film because they were so painful to remove mm-hmm. i mean that's a fun mm-hmm. fact i uh, yeah captain jack is an iconic character but on the rewatch jeffrey R- rushes barbosa he is so fucking committed and grounded Mm -hmm. and I think that with a different actor that was a little more heightened or gaudy or any of these things, it would have felt just absolutely farcical, and he really brings such a unique gravity. Mm -hmm. And he also comes back and acts again, which is fucking (laughs) insane. Yeah, I I think um, I picked someone different, but I think Jeffrey Rush... Starting in this film and the the second two movies, he mm-hmm. really picks up and like yeah. just keep, goes, yep. keeps going up and up and up. Mm-hmm. Um, but for me, it's um, uh, Kira Knightley. Nice, yeah. Because this is one of her first films, like big films. Before this, she did, I think, um, Bend It Like Beckham. But well, there's that, and then there's um, Atonement. Not before this. Was it not before this? No, Atonement no way. After. Okay. Yeah. Well, either way, it's like like catapulted her. She m- showed her ability. Mm-hmm. And then she comes back in this in the next two films as, I, as a much stronger mm-hmm. character as well, and she becomes king. So I'm not sure of the time. I think Love actually is right after this, but that's where she actually like starts taking off. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but for for me, for her in this film, she didn't just get shoved to the side. She's not a football. She's yeah. not. Oh yeah. She's not a just the damsel in distress. You know, she she acts. She has agency. Mm-hmm. I have. An, she goes to save Will. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I do have an honorable mention for this category, which is not Kieran Knightley, but Kieran Knightley's teeth. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> what? The teeth acting that happens. And we've got to save Will. There's a lot of front teeth acting. They get a lot of screen time. And I appreciate that, honestly. And they should be recognized. They should be, yeah. Well, that, that's going to be the award winner then. That's, okay. that's yeah. got to be it's going, on, it's going on the plaque. There we go. Yeah. Kira Knightley's teeth, everyone. You heard that's it here That's rough. That sounds like a family guy joke. It's a cutaway I'm sorry. Gag. You can cut that out of the podcast. But. Now it's staying in. <laughs> and uh, on to the verdict. I think we're all... Yeah. Re- rewatchability wise, we're all ready to watch this again, I think. Oh, yeah. In the near future. Mm-hmm. No, it's like one of those, it's like a boomerang movie in the mm-hmm. sense that, like, when I first saw it, I fucking loved it and was like, that was the best thing ever. Yeah. And then, you know, got drowned in uh, over pirate saturation. And then now that, like, the tides have settled a little bit, it's like, well, fuck yeah, yeah. I'm putting on Black Pearl. That sounds amazing. Yeah, mm-hmm. let's watch it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's so fun. It's, it's, yeah. Yeah. A party dedicated to pirates? That sounds great. Exactly. Yeah. Who doesn't no, want, who no want shame. to go in? I'm like, kind of sad I didn't dress up for this. Yeah. Like, I know. <laughs> no. oh. Fuck. Yeah, I would have put on an eye patch or something if it wasn't for traffic. <laughs> I mean, this was my choice because I wanted to rewatch it and I feel inspired to rewatch all of the other pirate movies. Mm hmm. Actually, which means signing up for Disney Plus or uh, asking Julia for it. Um, (laughs) But yeah, this is, I think while we were watching it, I just like very calmly, coolly, like a cool girl that I am said, why don't they make films like this anymore? This is what this country needs. (laughs) And I truly do believe that like, we there should be more movies like this Mm -hmm. this is fun it is not it is high concept enough that it has a good plot line good acting it is fun it is fun it is action adventure action adventure is the category that i would like to die in personally because it's it's the best Mm -hmm. i love it this is what we need as a film going society <laughs> and i know you guys like the superhero stuff sometimes but we 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 also need something that is not canon we need just s- silliness and fun i don't yeah, know we need uh, ips we need just like fun just yeah i think there is so much like fun historical stuff that could be drawn from to create more of like an action adventure category and Mm -hmm. this is what i would love to go see personally at the movies so has anybody seen uh our flag means death oh yeah yeah. it's a great show great Mm. so good yep yep yep. it was a good continuance of the the pirate theme and yeah Mm -hmm. the ideas behind it i think yeah there's also a new movie coming out called voyage of the demeter Mm -hmm. yeah which I am another Dracula film. It is Dracula, but it's also in the ocean. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it's a yeah, it's a period film. Dracula ship. Yeah. Right on. I think I'll see that. Yeah. <laughs> it won't be fun like this, but. Uh, I think I think a lot of people missed. There was a another Dracula. Show on Netflix. Hmm. That came out during the pandemic. Does it ring a bell to anybody? Mm-mm. Dracula show. Mm-hmm. It was it was like a, a limited series. Um, and it was fucking good. Uh, Van Helsing was uh, gender swapped. Oh. And yeah. there's a woman, Van Helsing. Mm. And it, they just did a really fucking good job. And it's gory. Mm. Funny. And I don't think anyone saw it. <laughs> no one but mm. me. Also okay. um, but it's like, Is it Vanessa Helsing? Is that a show? No. <laughs> no, it, it's actually just called Dracula. Okay. Oh. Hell yeah. I Check think. it out. But yeah, it's, um, it was fun. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. When, no one talked about it because everyone was talking about the pandemic. But oh, it was that old thing. That old thing. <laughs> but it was phenomenally acted. The characters were inventive. They were. And they didn't just gender swap everybody. They kind of like added to people's characters and and made it, you know, entertaining to watch. It's kind of broke out of the lore of the uh, Mary Shelley and all the old mm. storytelling stuff. But nice Bram Stoker and stuff. Cool. Anyone got anything to plug? 
just this lovely podcast that everyone should listen to and subscribe and, uh, you know, take a look at our Patreon and, you know, just follow us on all the things. And on Patreon, you can subscribe for free. You can, to, in order to learn when we post new episodes, things like, which is pretty common to get when if you're subscribed to us on Spotify or whatever. <laughs> for $5 a month, you get access to our, our behind-the-scenes content, post-show recordings, etc., etc. $15 a month. Which for which we have uh, one executive producer right now, uh, Addy Martinez. Thank you. Um, we will find find a better place to a better, better place to announce all these names. But you get your name announced in the podcast, uh, and we show much appreciation. I don't know. I think I've limited those, so we're not spending f- half an hour reading off names yeah. on here. But um, please, not yet anyway. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Right. We, haven't, we haven't met that mark yet. Uh, we also have our $100 tiers, uh, either Team Javier or Team Chuck, mm-hmm. where you get to choose the next film that we that we cover, which is pretty cool, I think. Yeah. And then we have our $1,000 tier for a sponsorship, so we get to shill for your company, project, name, whatever you like to do. We'll yeah. Talk about you during, before, and after, and that's pretty much it. That's all you get. Mm-hmm. But I play, please check it out. It's uh, patreoncom slash killers. We also have um, some product ideas cooking up, mm-hmm. a, uh, a, res- a drink recipe book. Yeah, hopefully in time for the holidays. Which will be pretty damn cool. And then um, I've also come up with, um, I have done this before, I've made custom uh, decks of cards. So we'll have Nostalgia Killers um, cards. Ooh. Oh, that would That's be super fun. fun. Yeah. I'm, trying, I'm trying to figure out what I can get, get away with copyright wise about what we can put of the films, like photos or stills mm-hmm. or whatever, which is probably not much. But those will also be available um, in the near future. Mm. Oh, I just need to design oh, yeah. them, and then we'll order maybe like a, a pack of 100, and then we'll, we'll uh, sell those off. Fuck yeah. Could be pretty cool. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, yeah. I want that. I want that now. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you for listening, if you still are. Um, I have been Luke Loaned. I have been Chuck Sarzenski. I have been Javier Martinez. Yo ho, yo ho, a pirate's life for me. I'm Lauren. Thank you. <laughs> and we have been the Nostalgia Killers. Yarg, 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 yarg,